This is the third in a series of videos that I've been doing about turning my webcomic book that I post each day on my website into my own paperback book that I can sell on Amazon and more. In the last few videos, I went over how I started the comic, uh, what I used to make the comic, how I choose the sizes on multiple platforms and also for print, and the easy way that I use Google Docs and Google Photos to help me get ready for printing the book on Amazon at the end of every year. So since the last video, I've created the cover for the book by downloading a cover template from KDP based on the amount of pages in my book. It has its own little calculator, which is pretty handy, and uh, it will let you determine the size of the spine. And of course, I have added all the webcomic images from my site in the past year uh, that have been backed up on Google Photos and dragged them into the Google Doc that I was using to create the book. So now I'm going to start the publishing process on KDP. First, what I need to do is I need to download the book that I created in Google Docs and I download it as a docx file. I don't know why they added the X to like Microsoft Word documents, but then I go over to KDP and I choose create a book and I choose create the paperback. And the first step, it has three steps. The first step is adding the info, like the author info, plus a description of the book that will be used for the Amazon page where the book is gonna be sold. Then I also need to choose a category that it will be under. Um, it only lets you choose two categories. And what I did is I just added the category uh, that are two subsections under comics and graphic novels. And I chose nonfiction in general because these comics are actually true. So it is nonfiction. After filling all that out, I go on to the next section for the book content that I can upload. So it gives me the option to let Amazon create an ISBN code, first of all, uh, like the one I have here. It's the barcode that they put on the back of each book. So they create that for you and they do it for free. Um, I guess ISBN codes, I guess, are really expensive. And there's a reason for buying them. I'm not that big enough yet. I'm not really doing anything too outstanding with these books, so I just go for the free option. I know there are arguments against it, but if I did have one, it also gives you the option to upload that, but I don't have one, so I use the free one. Then it'll be the choices of what I used for the dimensions of the book, the paper type, and after setting all that up so it knows what I'm gonna be uploading, I uploaded the document that I created out of my webcomic book from Google Docs. Then I can upload the cover that I created of the book using the KDP cover template that I downloaded from before. Also, by the way, while I'm doing this, I just wanted to mention, these books don't have to be as big as mine. And I don't mean size-wise, I mean like the amount of pages. Uh, the ones I make each year, I just, that's the way I choose to do it. It doesn't, you, the minimum requirement for Amazon is really only 24 pages for paperbacks. So it doesn't have to be a big, thick book to be produced on there. 24 pages is the minimum amount that needs to be done. So I just choose to do a collected version of my book each year. All right, so now after uploading these, the cover, the book itself, uh, I can't move on until, to the next section until I launch the previewer and check that there are no mistakes in this proof. Now, most of the time it'll be minor mistakes that are on my, that are on my end. Like when I first uploaded the doc, uh, the title page was too big, so it pushed the first comic back one page and there was an extra blank page. Didn't notice that till I first uploaded it. It looked fine on the document that I had, so I had to re-upload or fix that, re-upload a new one. Um, otherwise, if there are any real errors, it will tell you, uh, you'll get a bunch of red check marks of things to check and then you can go back and try and fix them and upload those, those again. So I didn't have to do as many this time, I was surprised. But each time I've had to go through and fix it probably four or five times before I got one that didn't uh, tell me that I was getting an error. And then after uploading this, you say, yes, I approve, this is what's gonna print moving forward. This is good. This is what I want. All the mistakes are on me if it happens now. Um, then after I do that, underneath it shows the amount that it's going to cost to actually make the book, the printing price of the book, which isn't the full price yet, but it's the printing price. And my book, it says to put this together, it's going to be $4.15. So that's the minimum cost of my book so far. Now in the next section that I go to, that's where it shows me the printing and materials cost and the royalty percentage that I can earn based on the price of the book that I set myself. One of the questions that I got while making these videos is, is it cost effective to print a book? And the answer is kinda. 
<laughs> I know. It's especially doing the ones that I do. Uh, with the amount of pages, like if I did them with less pages, it might be a little bit more cost effective, but I don't feel like I'd be able to charge as much for them. It's a weird kind of balancing act. Uh, so with this amount of pages, uh, I can kind of charge a little bit more, but it still costs more to make them. It's a weird... Yeah, it's a weird balancing thing. So Amazon has an equation that they use to determine the cost of the of the paperback. I don't get it. I've gone through it several times and figured out and said, looked at it and tried to figure it out and said, I think that makes sense. So I said before that the printing cost for the book was 415, or at least that's what it told me. So I'm gonna do a real quick one here because this is math and really there's nothing I can do about it anyway. So it's just kind of the concept of why it's like, okay, now that I'm on this page, why is the minimum price that I can set higher than what it told me the cost of the book was? So I think it's because of materials and, and labor type of thing like that. First, what it is, is it's the fixed cost of the printing book. So it's the fixed cost plus page count times per page cost. That equals printing cost. They have a calculator on there to go determine your cost like before you even start. It just told me, I said, how many pages do I have in the book and is it black and white? And it would go, this is what the cost would be. They determine it, I still don't get what it is. Royalty cost is based on the fixed cost. And this is where I actually make the profit off of what they call royalties. So it's not just like, okay, here's the 415 we told you it's gonna cost. It's the added price on top of that, which the minimum price I believe is uh, $6.92. So I can, raise the price from $6.92. Don't know where that price came from either. It's weird. So what I do is I normally, since these are like around 365 pages, I charge $9.99 for it. I do that just because in researching like graphic novels and books of this size of comics, that's kind of the price range that it goes to. It's between $7.99 and $9.99. If I sell more of them, that's okay. I Literally none of this involves me after this point. I don't have to store them or anything. So if I can sell more, then I get more out of that. But if I charge a larger price, will I sell as many? You see where it comes? This is why I'm saying, is it cost effective? I'm I'm trying to determine between a dollar something and 64 cents or something. You know, it's so that's the cost effectiveness. If I sell them with little to no effort on my part and get that dollar. Like say I sell 10 of them a day, I get around $10 a day. That's nice. I didn't have to do anything and I can make, and maybe it'll bring more people to my site to see the updated comics. Then there's the option before that I had said about expanded distribution in the past couple of videos, which is a 40% royalty rate. It's much smaller, but the price increases. Now, this is the option where expanded distribution can help reach more readers because it will be offered as bulk purchases of books for bookstores, online retailers, libraries, and academic institutions. I also discovered the other day when I was saying that I've sold my book this way before uh, and people have contacted me saying they found it in a bookstore. I was doing research on this while I was setting up for this video and I was looking for where I sell it, the physical copies I bought myself on my eBay store. And when I was searching, I saw four copies. And I'm like, what's this all about? And I looked and there are online retailers, one of them being Goodwill here in Wisconsin that actually are selling my book from expanded sales. The first book that is. I, since then I haven't done expanded sales, but on the first book I did just because I wanted to test it out. And I guess uh, Goodwill had bought one. That must've been one of the sales that I had on there, but uh, they got it for a fraction of the cost and they're selling it for like $10 more than I am. I love that. I don't know if they are just doing it based on cost or if they think I'm Tom Ray, the animator who used to make the Tom and Jerry cartoons, which happens to me a lot, uh, considering he's uh, he died just a few years ago. So I'm not sure whether to take that as a compliment or not, but I did love him and it's one of the reasons I started cartooning. Anyway, what I was getting at is, so it's a 40% royalty rate, and if I change to expanded distribution, the minimum price for my book changes to $10, and then I would have to charge 12 or something to actually make a profit. And that's even way more than I would charge for this book. So that's how I uploaded my paperback book, and I've submitted the book for publishing. Now, what I can also do is after I do this, I can choose to add an ebook version of it. It's an option right next to where I just uploaded it in my KDP bookshelf. 
To create this, KDP actually has an ebook creation tool that I can download and use that to format it for ebooks. And since my book has comic panels, this is the neat thing that I can choose to make them swipeable panel books. I mentioned this before that it's pretty easy to do in the tool. Now with these determined panels that I have and they're all kind of the same size, I can do it pretty quickly with the comic the way that I have it set up. Just say, set it up for panels and it goes through and it searches the whole thing and it pretty much detects all the pan panels for me. I upload it and then when they process it, it's gonna have swipeable panels. Now the other thing about eBooks is selling one is a bit smaller of a price requirement. So the minimum price listing for my ebook is $299. That's the minimum price I can charge, unlike the $689, I think I said it was, for the paperback. Now, just a quick thought on the different ways that I market my book. I experiment with different ways of doing it all the time. The biggest one is I do advertise for it. Uh, uh, and one of the things that I can do is uh, advertise directly on Amazon itself. So it will be suggested inside of Amazon when people look at similar books, or if people start looking at my book, then view other things on Amazon, it will suggest people interested in the same things might like this book. And it's fairly cheap to do it in Amazon this way. And it's a limited sort of ad that I can create. It uses the pre-existing cover that I have for the book. I can't do a custom image for it. I can just kind of add some text to the description that's a little bit different than what's actually the description of my book. But people are on Amazon already buying things. And if they're buying books, then then it says you can bundle it with this book that you might like. There's more of a chance that I can sell one. And I have done that uh, in the past. And what I had done is I messed with that for a while. And when it started, when I started selling like at least one each day, then I just let it roll. But I would experiment with it until I found one that was kind of actually working each day. And then of course, I also have an author page on Amazon that shows the books that I have for sale. So if people want to see more about the author or click on that, or I can send people to my author page to look at all the books that I have published on there. Uh, that's another way to do it where instead of just sending them to one book page, they can see all of the books that I have. Plus, I feel like it looks a little bit more impressive to go, here's my Amazon author page, even though all I had to do is create a book. But I guess that is what being an author is, right? So I've uploaded my book. I'm gonna have the new issue out soon. Um, if you haven't signed up for my email list or if you haven't visited my website or listened to the podcast, you can do all that at tomraiswebsite.com. And uh, this new book will be coming out soon. I hope you really enjoyed this. And if you have any questions or comments or if I there's anything that you wanna know more about in this whole process, feel free to let me know. You can just reach me at the website, tomraiswebsite.com. Thank you very much for watching these videos.